So the holidays are here and what better excuse do I have to take on a ball gown than for Christmas. So today I'll be showing you guys how I made this gorgeous ball gown. This video is sponsored by one of my favorite stores on Etsy, Helen's 7th Heaven, and she kindly sent me this gorgeous silk satin along with this lace and over 30 yards of tulle that is three meters wide. So here I have my pattern pieces already drafted and I drafted it off camera because this is going to be a lot. So I wanted to make sure we had enough time to fit this into one video. I'm showing you guys where, I, where we will be placing our carrier tabs. And as far as my skirt goes, I just draped a full circle skirt and then I cut it into panels that had princess seams and that's how I got my skirt. Now I started by cutting out my skirt because I wanted to make sure that I had enough for cut uh, to cut out all of my skirt before I decided on what I was going to do with the bodice and I realized here after I cut out my center front panel that my fabric wasn't wide enough for me to cut my um, side front and my side back panels it just wasn't wide enough so what I did was I opened out my fabric and laid it um so I laid it out so that it was one layer and then I cut two half circle skirts with the radius I can't remember what my radius was but you guys know how to cut half a circle skirts and if not there are tons of calculators online Okay, so I decided to go ahead and cut out two layers of tulle for my bodice. And then I have some bias strips here to finish off my neckline. I have the half circle skirts and then I have one full circle skirt. I'm sorry, two full circle skirts cut out of tulle. And here I have my silk layers. I just wanted to put it on the dress form to see if I liked the half circle skirt instead of princess seams. And I decided to go to go with it. I mean, I already cut it out. So then I took it over to my, my sewing machine and I sewed up the side seams and the center back seam and I left five inches open at the top. Now I'm getting ready to cut out the base of my petticoat, which is just going to be one circle skirt uh, without any gathers at the top. So I chose the radius of four and a half and that's what I'm marking here. So I'm marking my radius on both sides as well as the middle and I have my fabric folded in half and then a half again so we get one full circle skirt and then what I was just doing there was measuring from my waist to the floor which is 46 and I'm marking that here and I'm going to go ahead and cut it out Now I'm determining the placement of all of my um, ruffles that are going to be here on this petticoat and I decided to start nine inches from the bottom and then I realized that I needed one a little bit lower than that. So um, I'm doing them every five inches all the way up and what I'm doing here, uh, I'm just marking down on the paper so I can know um, how long the plate, how um how long the ruffle needs to be as well as how wide and I'm just going to mark my placement all the way around Okay, so this is when I realized I need to have a ruffle lower to the bottom of the hem, kind of. So then I'm starting to place them five inches apart, and I'm just placing pins every five inches. And then I'm going to figure out how long they are. So like how long from the pin down to the bottom of the hem, and then how wide they are, um, kind of following along the rows, the rows of pins that I made. And to make this easier, I decided to go ahead and fold it in half again. And then continue to pin all the way around so that I can go ahead and figure out how wide my pieces are. And that's what I'm doing here. And I wrote that on paper so that I can keep track of all of the pieces that I'm cutting out. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut them out. And I decided to cut four widths of each piece. And this is what they look like now. I'll cut out and I have them labeled um one two three four five six and seven if you're accident prone like me you probably shouldn't use all these pins but this is what i chose to do and it helped me um figure out what um layer i was on so the first thing i'm going to do 
when making the petticoat is I'm going to gather down all of the tulle. Now, since I used uh, four widths of each um, section, I had to sew seams in the sides of the gathers as well. And I'm using the tension between six and seven and my stitch length is 4.5 millimeters. And this is the kind of gathering that it's giving me. And I absolutely love it. I gathered the bottom, um, the bottom, ruffle more dense than any other one because i wanted to kind of look like um like a can can kind of skirt where you pick it up you can see the ruffles at the bottom and here i am pinning down all of the ruffles and i'm just going to go ahead and sew this and this was a really long process i didn't record the whole thing but you get the gist of it just sew it um on the marked line that you marked well, you should have marked and this is what it looks like once i've sewn most of the layers i still had a couple more layers at the top to go and the higher they are i decided to go ahead and space them out a little bit more rather than having uh, keeping them five inches apart because i didn't want this to look like a cupcake kind of uh gown i wanted it to be more a-line so every time i sew i do another layer higher up i'm taking it off and putting it on the dress form and then I'm pinning my skirt over it just to see if I'm getting the shape that I like. And I was happy with this shape, but I did add one more layer on top of this before I call it quits. Okay, so at this time, I also added the circle skirt that we cut earlier, the two layers of that. I put it on top to see if it was looking how I liked it to look, and it was. And I also took time to sew the center front and the princess seams of the bodice. It's super simple, guys. It's just the princess seams and the center front seam. Um, and this is what it looks like. And I think I was really happy with this. So I decided to go ahead and take everything off the dress form and start giving everything a good press. Well, when I say everything, I mean my silk layers. So I want to go ahead and press out the seams of my silk layers. And I also press the straps flat. I put it back on the dress form and now I'm going to go ahead and do my first trim of the circle skirt because you know when you're uh, hemming a circle skirt you need to uh, trim it a little longer first and let it hang for a couple of days and then come back and hem it so that uh, you give time for your skirt to warp out of shape because the circle skirt is completely on the bias well mostly on the bias so uh, you would make sure you let it hang for a couple of days before you actually do the final trim and hem. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm also going to take it to the sewing machine and give the top a stay stitch just because I was manipulating it a lot and I didn't want it to stretch out and get uh, misshapen. So I'm giving it a stay stitch here at the top and I'm just sewing. I think I did this at a three millimeter stitch um, about um, half a centimeter away from the top edge. I also decided to sew kind of a placket kind of thing. I think I think that's what you would call that to the back and close it with hook and eye instead of a zipper. So I interfaced uh, that opening part and then I cut a bias strip that I'm going to go ahead and sew to the back part. And I did it for one side just to see if it worked and it did. So here I'm showing you on camera how to do this side. So I'm sewing it together with a one centimeter seam allowance. And then I'm going to flip it to the inside well, first I'm gonna pink it down and then I'm gonna flip it into the inside, tuck in those raw edges and then give it a nice slip stitch down. And I actually really liked this finish. It was nice and neat and it was a lot more tailored than what I usually do. So I'm really going to start, um, I'm really in the mood to get into more tailored uh, dresses and gowns. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and attach my overlay to my uh, to my silk layer. So I'm putting my silk into the tool, and I'm going to match the back seam first. And when I um, 
when I'm matching the back seam, I'm going to tuck in the very uh, the centimeter seam allowance of the tool and pin that there and that gives it a nice clean finish and then i'm just going to evenly evenly <laughs> distribute the tool around the whole um the whole waistline of the silk layer because the tool is it's meant to be gathered in and the silk layer is obviously the same width as my waistline so I'm just pinning the center front and I'm finding where the side seams would be. And then I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that evenly around um, the waistline of my skirt. And I'm going to sew that down. And I decided to try it on to make sure that it was looking good. And I liked the way it looked, but obviously it still needed the petticoat to give it the shape that I was looking for. So I sewed a couple layers onto the top of the petticoat. And this is what it looks like when the petticoat is all completed. I absolutely love it, guys. I have to make a petticoat that's meant to wear on the outside like this. Um, obviously, that's made with a little bit more tender love and care but you're not going to see the petticoat so it'll be all right so now what i'm doing here is attaching the petticoat to the, my skirt layers and i'm doing it the same way i attached the tool layer to my satin layer except the top of my petticoat should be around the same as the um should be around the same as the silk layer it was not meant to be gathered in but i manipulated it a lot and the skirt is actually very heavy so it did uh, kind of stretch out of shape a little bit so i tried to correct that slightly with a stay stitch at the top but it can only correct so much so what i'm doing is i'm just easing it into the the waistline of the existing skirt and i just let it be what it was Now I'm sewing everything together with a one centimeter seam allowance and I'm basting it first just to make sure that everything is good. And then I went back over it again with a 2.5 millimeter stitch to lock everything in place. And here I am making my straps. Um, I previously had straps pinned onto my dress form, but those straps were not long enough to cross in the back. So I had to recut my straps. And then I also cut a really long strap that will be the lacing for the back as well. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And then I'm gonna turn them out and give them a press. Okay, so now what I'm doing is uh, marking the placement of my carrier tabs. That's going to be for my lacing. And what I like to do is I love to use my thumb as spacing because my thumb is about a little bit over a centimeter wide. So I like to call it a thumb's width. And that's what I use to um, keep my measuring consistent. So what I did was I placed the top one and the bottom one. And then I placed the middle one. And what I'm doing is just I'm machine basting them on there so that when I uh, clean finish them, they're not moving all over the place. So what I'm doing here is I'm just folding over my tool so that it's kind of 
y'all this was so hard to explain so pretty much i sewed two layers of tulle together right with the princess seams but the sides are open and i wanted to clean finish my carrier tabs of the sides so what i did was i sewed the carrier tabs to the top layer of tulle and then after i did that i turned the, the carriers to the inside and folded the second layer to the inside as well flipped it inside out and then this is what i'm doing now so i'm sewing um i'm sewing with the centimeter seam allowance i made sure it looked good i trimmed the seam allowance down and then did another strengthening stitch here to make sure that my seams are not going to bust on me because this is tool but it is two layers of tool and this tool is pretty robust i'm sorry i probably have your mind from here to china but it's okay you guys got me if you don't leave it down in the comments and i will try to explain it a little bit better um, but i hope the visual um, has let you guys kind of see what i've done so then I'm turning it right back out and then I kind of pulled the carrier tabs outwards and then I did another row of strengthening stitch there to make sure that my carrier tabs are not going anywhere because we want to be snatched in this dress. So we're going to pretty lace it pretty tight. So what I'm doing is just doing another kind of strengthening stitch here to make sure that my carrier tabs are not going anywhere. You could use more than three. You could do like a full kind of corseted back, but I decided that three was fine. So now what I'm doing is attaching my uh, strap, my shoulder strap, and I'm attaching it to the top layer only. I'm going to pin it and baste it there. And then I'm going to turn the back layer out so that it, the right side of the back layer is facing the right side of the, um, the front layer. And I'm going to sew that seam. So what I'm doing is just sandwiching in my strap so that my strap is not just floating, you know. And then I'm uh, cleaning off all of the threads and I'm going to also snip down the bottom of the strap to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Now here I have my bias strips and I'm going to go ahead and clean finish my neckline using this bias strip. And I'm clean finishing the neckline both layers together. So I'm sewing this uh, to my neckline with a one centimeter seam allowance and then I'm going to flip it to the inside and pull it nice and tight and then sew that down as close to the edge as I can and then I'm going to trim off the extra and that gave me a nice clean finish that I was really happy with uh, and I was actually really surprised that it looked good uh, because it was pretty much an experiment but it worked so it works guys try it And I thought to myself that the skirt is actually really heavy. So I decided to bone my princess seams and my center front seam to make sure that the tool bodice can support the weight of the skirt. And obviously, guys, you want to sew boning channels and then put your boning into the boning channels. But your girl was lazy, so she didn't do that. And you know what? It was covered with the lace. And it actually, when I wore it, it was actually still pretty comfortable. But don't do like how I do. Sew boning channels, guys. Okay, I don't want if you're going to dislike the video, dislike it now. It's okay. But, you know, I'm cutting corners here because I have to get these videos out. But make sure that you guys are doing it the right way when it comes to your clients. I also put a roll of stay stitching at the bottom of the, uh, the waistline of the bodice as well. So keep that in mind. And now I am pressing out 
everything, especially pressing my bones nice and flat. And I'm making sure to use a pressing cloth because even though this tool is really high quality, it still will melt on you. You don't want that. You put all this work into this bodice, you do not want to melt your tool. <laughs> so make sure you're using a pressing cloth and make sure you're ironing all of your seams good. So this is what it looks like uh, once everything is all pressed out. My waistline seam has not been sewn, but I wanted to put it on the dress form to see if I like it and to see if I like how the lacy looks in the back. And I absolutely love it, guys. I'm so excited. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the waistline seam here. So I'm just putting it right sides together and sewing the waistline seam. And I think I basted it and then sewed it again with a 2.5 millimeter stitch and then I did a fitting to make sure that it fits and it did so I went off camera and just glued on the lace and this is what it looks like guys here's my sister giving me life because she knows I'm like 100% not in my comfort zone but I really wanted to do this for you guys because I know you guys have been asking me for a ball gown um so here we go we can excuse my walls I got kids I wait for my husband to paint them <laughs> but here is the gown I absolutely love this guys and I'm so glad that I pushed myself to make this. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate you guys more than you know and I'll see you guys in my next one.